welcome. Be sure to like and subscribe for more scary stories, or I will come for you. Today's stories are more handwritten tales from my personal archive. Dark and disturbing, just the way I like it. You have been warned. Story number one. So, this all started a couple months ago. I'm just a regular dude, you know. I got a job working at this boring office park handling data entry and spreadsheets and shit. It's mind-numbing work, but it pays the bills. Anyway, to help pass the time at night after work, I've gotten really into exploring some of the darker corners of the internet lately. Maybe it's a cry for help or a way to get some twisted thrills in my otherwise dull life. I don't know. But I found myself going deeper and deeper down these rabbit holes. Hacking forums, red rooms, that kind of thing. One weird site I stumbled across was this underground marketplace on the dark web where you could buy all sorts of crazy stuff. Illegal weapons, identities, hitmen for hire. But the thing that really caught my eye was the drug section. These guys were selling pharmaceuticals and research chemicals that you could never get legally. Potent hallucinogens, psychedelics, you name it. At first, I just browsed out of curiosity, but after a while, I got tempted to try some of this stuff out. So, I made an order for a moderately dosed tab of acid and some pharma-grade MDMA crystals. I was really paranoid about the shipping and tracking and all that, but everything went smoothly. The drugs arrived vacuum-sealed and discreet. That first trip was pretty wild. I'm not gonna lie. I hadn't done acid since college, and this was clearly really potent and clean stuff compared to the street junk I used to get. Vivid hallucinations, fractal patterns, my whole consciousness felt rewired. It was also incredibly euphoric thanks to the molly. I had an amazing time. After that, I started becoming a semi-regular buyer on this dark net drug site. Just small, personal amounts here and there. Ketamine, DMT, psilocybin, 2CBU, you name it. Looking back, I probably spent way too much money feeding that habit. But at the time, those weekend psychonautic trips really felt like they were giving me an escape from the drudgery of workaday life. So I hit up this vendor I'd used a bunch of times before. Dude always had good product and got it to me quick. This time, when I placed my order, he messaged me, saying since I was such a loyal customer, he had a special link to share with me. Told me it was to this crazy live stream called Beast Wars that was highly coveted. I didn't think much of it at the time, but a little voice in the back of my head wondered if this was something I really wanted to see. A few days later, my package arrived as expected. Inside was a little slip of paper with a URL and password scrawled on it. That night, I took a couple tabs of some killer acid the vendor had thrown in as a bonus, made myself a sandwich, and sat down at my computer, ready for a wild trip. I punched in the URL and password and this super sketchy anonymous livestream service popped up. No video was being broadcast yet, just a message saying the show would start soon. About 15 minutes later, the stream started. No greeting or anything, it just kicked right off with this first person. Cam pointed at the floor of what looked like a big empty room or warehouse. You could see a pair of boots frantically moving around as whoever was wearing the camera seemed to be looking for a way out. The pounding, industrial-type music in the background made it feel like a fucked-up video game. The person with the camera moves to a door and tries the handle, but it's locked. That's when this booming voice comes over some speakers. Welcome to Beast Wars, Jason. Your chance to earn your freedom and the grand prize of $100,000 awaits. Do you accept the challenge? The dude wearing the cam, this Jason guy, yells out, What the fuck is this? 
Let me out of here. The creepy voice responds. If you want to walk out of here unharmed, with more money than you could ever dream of, you need to defeat the beast. Going forward, you will have no ability to communicate. Your only option is to fight or be destroyed. We'll see how tough you really are, Jason. At this point, my heart is pounding out of my chest. These psychos had just kidnapped some random guy and were gonna make him fight some kind of beast for money or something. What the actual fuck? On the stream, part of the wall opens up and this massive male silverback gorilla enters from a side room, beating its chest and roaring. This huge ass ape had to be at least 600 pounds and looked absolutely ripped beyond belief. That's when it dawned on me they were gonna make this Jason dude fight a giant fucking gorilla to the death. I wanted to stop watching so damn bad, but I had taken way too much acid and felt glued to the screen. The music was trancing me out too. I couldn't look away from this train wreck about to happen. The only item laying on the floor for Jason was a metal baseball bat. I guess the sick fucks were trying to at least give the guy somewhat of a fighting chance. Not that it would help much against a full-grown silverback ape. The fight starts and Jason comes out, swinging wildly, just trying to hit the gorilla with everything he has. The gorilla just casually leans back, avoiding his blows. It keeps allowing Jason to swing the bat, not even getting phased. I can hear the crowd behind the camera, letting out these sick oo sounds every time Jason misses. Then, without warning, the gorilla lets out this guttural roar that damn near blows out my speakers. It rushes at Jason, grabbing both his arms and snapping them instantly like twigs. The agonizing screams of pain from Jason will haunt me forever. He drops to his knees, with both arms just dangling there, clearly broken. I'm absolutely squirming in horror at this point, as the gorilla starts wailing away on Jason with these thunderous hammer fists. Loud crack after crack as it hits him in the ribs, legs, back, everywhere. It was doling out this savage beating like it was a small misbehaving pet it needed to discipline. Jason was screaming bloody murder with every hit, begging for his life. I felt like I was watching a live murder and was powerless to do anything about it. Eventually, the beating just stops. The gorilla pauses and looks down at what remains of Jason lying on the floor in a pool of his own blood. He's barely even conscious, wheezing and gargling up blood. The silverback places one of its massive hands on Jason's throat and starts squeezing the life out of him. Jason makes these horrendous, gagging noises as his face turns bright red, then purple. Just when I was sure, Jason's neck was about to be crushed. The silverback lets go. Jason lies there, gasping for air as the gorilla moves even closer. It grabs Jason's jeans and just rips them right off, exposing his underwear. The beast then does the same with Jason's t-shirt, ripping it to shreds. His whole, nearly naked, bloody body was just lying there. The audience behind the camera roars with sick cheers and applause. Then the silverback grabs one of Jason's legs and starts pulling. He lets out this shrieking screams as the gorilla wants to tear the leg right off. I'm dry heaving at this point, practically convulsing just watching. The gorilla keeps pulling harder and harder on the leg as Jason's shrieks turn into more blood-curdling screams. You can audibly hear a bunch of snapping sounds, like branches breaking, as the gorilla successfully dislocates and separates Jason's leg right from the hip socket. The crowd goes insane as Jason lies there, babbling and whimpering in shock with only one leg attached. The silverback, still not satisfied, grabs the other leg and starts pulling again. 
This long, grisly process repeats itself as it yanks and tears the other leg off in a similar fashion. By the time it's over, Jason is just a torso lying in a huge pool of his own blood. Both his fully detached legs are just lying there on the floor a few feet away from his body. Every time I'd try to look away from the screen, the music and crowd noise would just pull me right back in. It was like being in a trance that I couldn't snap out of, no matter how grotesque it became. The gorilla then puts its whole mouth over what remains of Jason's abdomen region, and I see it start tearing away at his flesh with its huge teeth. It was literally eating him alive, bit by bit while globs of blood and intestinal matter went flying in every direction. Jason was somehow still barely alive for all of this, just lying there barely conscious with a mixed look of agony and confusion all over what was left of his pale bloodied face. Like he still couldn't process what was actually happening to him. The silverback was pulling off chunks of his flesh like some kind of primordial meal and tossing the digested remains to the side. It kept pausing to smash its fists down on Jason's exposed abdominal area over and over again in between bites. Each hit made his bloody insides gush out even more like a massive open wound. At this point, I had long since thrown up multiple times. It was the gnarliest thing I've ever witnessed. Yet, I still couldn't pry my eyes away for even a second. The music and constant cheering pulled me back every time like a spell. This process of being eaten alive by the gorilla continued for well over an hour. Jason was somehow still hanging on those last few threads of life through the bulk of it, drifting in and out of consciousness, occasionally releasing these weak wails and pitiful whimpers. When it was finally over, the camera pulled back to show what remained of Jason, which wasn't much. Just some tattered bloody rags, uneaten chunks of flesh, and a mostly gnawed away skeleton lying there. But the nauseating part I'll never be able to get out of my head was his two detached legs lying on the floor nearby, eerily still wearing his socks and shoes, just wildly out of place amongst the rest of that mutilated, inhuman wreckage. As the camera panned across the gory scene one last time, the voice came over again, Well done, beast. You remain the undefeated champion and have earned another victory feast. For the low, low price of $1,000, one lucky viewer shall be randomly selected to star in next month's event against the beast. The champion must be defeated eventually. The live stream then cut out as a site to enter payment information appeared on screen. At that point, I finally hurled my keyboard across the room and took a hammer to my monitor, smashing it into pieces. I was so traumatized and furious at whatever demented people were behind this, but had no way to track them down. No way to get justice for that poor fuck. I spent the next week curled up in a ball, alternating between vomiting, crying, and having severe panic attacks if I even thought too hard about what I had seen. This Beast Wars stream had given me the darkest, most depraved look into the human psyche that I never could have imagined existed. It's like I witnessed the physical manifestation of the sickest parts of mankind, with no remorse or value for life whatsoever. I just hope that whoever is behind this gets what's coming to them one day. Anyway, Thanks for letting me get some of that off my chest. I've never told a soul about this until now, and really just needed to get it out there. Story number two. All right, so this all started a few months back. I work a regular nine to five at this little electronics repair shop down in Miami. It's nothing fancy, but it pays the bills. Anyway, one day, this sketchy-looking dude comes in wanting to get his laptop fixed. He's all twitchy, 
and keeps looking over his shoulder like he's expecting someone to jump out at him. So I take a look at his laptop and see that the hard drive is completely fried. I tell him I can try to recover the data, but it'll cost him. This guy doesn't even blink, just slaps down a wad of cash on the counter. Now, I'm no genius, but even I can put two and two together and realize this guy is up to some shady shit. Curiosity gets the better of me, and I start poking around in his files once I get the drive working again. That's when I stumble across this weird site on the dark web. It's like a twisted eBay, but for human organs and body parts. Apparently, this sick fuck is an underground surgeon who harvests organs and sells them to the highest bidder. At first, I'm horrified, you know. I'm just a regular guy trying to get by. But then I start thinking about all the money this guy must be raking in. We're talking millions here. That's when the gears in my head start turning. I figure, hey, I've got some basic medical knowledge from that time I tried to become an EMT. How hard could it be to snatch up some poor sap, slice them open, and cash in on their insides? So I hit up my buddy Juan, who knows a guy who knows a guy in the organ trafficking world. Next thing I know, I'm getting set up with this creepy-ass abandoned butcher shop as my operating room. Juan even hooks me up with some male nurse who got fired for malpractice. Dude's gonna be my assistant on the harvests. Our first victim is this young woman, maybe in her late twenties. Cute girl, but a bit of a loner from what I can tell. No one's gonna miss her right away. We grab her, coming out of a grocery store one night, chloroform rag to the face. Bam, she's out cold. We get her back to the butcher shop, strip her down, and tie her up nice and tight on one of the old meat hooks. Can't have her wiggling around while I'm elbow deep in her guts. The nurse gets her prepped and sedated while I go over the inventory list we got from the website. Some rich guy in Dubai wants a fresh heart, so that's priority one. A couple of kids in Brazil need kidney transplants, so we'll grab those too. Maybe we'll harvest a lung or two if we've got the time. So I put on my scrub mask, fire up my trusty bone saw, and got to work. I'm not gonna lie, there was a lot of screaming at first before the sedatives really kicked in. But I've watched enough YouTube tutorials to know what to do. Once you get past all the blood and viscera, it's actually kind of relaxing, you know? Like doing a jigsaw puzzle. The nurse is a huge help, keeping the girl stable while I'm excavating all those precious organs. It's crazy just how much organs are worth on the black market. Those sick fucks will pay top dollar for the freshest goods. When it's all said and done, we've got the heart, both kidneys, and one lung packed up nice and tight in a cooler full of ice. The nurse calls up Abaya while I spent a good hour mopping up the puddles of blood and stuffing what's left of the girl into hefty bags. We load up the van, double bag the organs for transit, and then it's off to meet our organ mogul connection down by the docks. Dude shows up in this sleek Porsche. Doesn't even blink when we crack open the cooler and show him our freshly harvested haul. Just writes out a cashier's check for a cool 300k and trades it for the organs. In that moment, I know I found my true calling in life. Over the next few months, Juan helps me line up a handful of other donors. We got this low-level drug courier who made the mistake of stiffing his supplier. There was this runaway teenage girl who was panhandling on the street, and an illegal immigrant day laborer who worked construction gigs under the table. No one who'd be missed right away. 
each time played out pretty much the same as that first girl. We'd snatch them up, bring them to the shop, and take our time harvesting their insides. You know, I actually start looking forward to those nights. It's thrilling, you know, cutting someone open and rooting around in their guts while they're still warm and kicking. Plus, the money we're hauling in is insane. We move up to doing full body harvests, auctioning off hearts, lungs, livers, kidneys, bones, tissue, you name it. Soon as one cooler gets dropped off, my organ broker already has another lined up. It's a real juggling act, but I'm loving every second. Things took a turn for the weird a couple months ago. Juan reaches out about a special order he got through his underworld contacts. Some big shot rapper down in Miami Gardens wants a pair of unblemished human lungs for a Santeria ritual. Says he'll pay a million bucks, no questions asked. I'm no expert in weird voodoo shit like that, but a mill is a mill. So we hit the streets, looking for someone young and healthy. We settle on this college kid who bartends at one of the beach clubs. My nurse and I grab him after his shift one night, haul him back to the butcher shop. The kid sobered up by the time we get him all tied up and prepped. I'm just about to cut into him when he starts babbling all this crazy shit in Spanish. Dude's straight up begging for his life, promising me fame and fortune if I let him go. Honestly, I'm tempted for a split second, but then the kid snaps his jaws at me like he wants to take a chunk out of my throat. Fuck that noise. So I tear into the guy, cracking open his ribcage and getting to work on disconnecting his lungs. He's howling like a banshee the whole time, spraying me with blood every time he coughs or gasps for air. I just try to tune it out, you know. I'm in the zone, taking my sweet time to harvest those lungs intact. Finally, I get them disconnected and packaged up all neat and tidy. The nurse finishes draining the kid and cleaning up while I call Juan to make the drop-off. Everything's going smoothly until he tells me the pickup point. This creepy trailer park out in the Everglades, miles from civilization. I'm a city boy, born and raised in Miami. I don't fuck with swamp shit, but a million bucks is a million bucks, you know. So I agree to meet up, haul the cooler with the lungs in the back of my van and take off. I'm not gonna lie, the drive out there is creepy as hell. It's the middle of the night, all I've got for company is the damn buzzing mosquitoes and croaking frogs. Any other time, I'd turn back, but that money is the only thing on my mind. Finally, I hit this dirt road that looks like it's leading into the ass end of nowhere. Juan keeps feeding me directions over the phone till I roll up on this double-wide trailer with a rusted-out El Camino parked out front. I grab the cooler and start heading towards the door when I hear the most bone-chilling sound. I spin around just in time to see this hulking figure emerge from the shadows between the trees. Dude is easily 6'5", 300 pounds, with some weird bone necklace hanging around his neck. I'm frozen in fear until I hear him speak in this gravelly voice. You got the package. I raise the cooler, and light catches his face for just a second. I'm no stranger to the criminal underworld. But this guy. He looked downright supernatural, man. His eyes were pure black, like the endless void of space. And his skin looked sickly green like he was decomposing even though he was still walking around. Who? What are you? I stammer out pathetically. This demonic motherfucker just smiles at me with a mouthful of razor-sharp teeth. Just a humble practitioner of the dark arts, he hisses. Now hand over those lungs before I'm forced to take them from your cold, dead husk. At this point, my mind goes completely blank with primal terror. I drop the cooler and turn to run, but suddenly everything goes black. 
Next thing I know, I'm waking up on the side of the road miles away with the van's engine still running. I book it straight home and burrow under my covers like a scared little kid, trying to convince myself it was all just a crazy nightmare. When my phone rings a few hours later, I nearly jump out of my skin. It's Juan asking why I never made the drop. That demon freak tried to kill me. I yell. We're getting out of this whole organ game, effective immediately, before one of us ends up dead. Juan tries to laugh it off, saying I must have had a bad batch of lewds or something. But I could hear the tremor in his voice. He knows damn well there are supernatural players in this sick underworld. Guys, you don't want to get mixed up with under any circumstances. So that's my story. Just a regular guy who got in way over his head in the high-stakes world of underground organ trafficking. Isn't Florida just the craziest fucking place on Earth? I'm out of the game for good now. Who knows what other sinister forces are lurking in the underworld's shadowy corners. I'll just stick to fixing PlayStations and iPhones. Thanks. At least that way I'll never have to worry about waking up with some cartel psycho harvesting my pancreas on a meat hook. So there you have it. My stint as an unlicensed back alley organ broker. I'd highly recommend keeping your insides on the inside if I were you. This shady underground is no joke. Lock your doors at night and watch your back. You never know who's looking to crack you open and cash in on your vital organs. Crazy world we live in, ain't it? Story number three. So this happened to my friend Sarah a couple years ago. Just to give some background, Sarah was a genius with computers from a young age. She got into MIT at 16 and graduated top of her class at 19 with a degree in computer science and cybersecurity. Anyway, after she graduated, she got a job at this big cybersecurity firm in Florida. Her work was mostly just doing security audits and shit for companies and organizations. But in her free time, she was like a vigilante hacker, using her mad skills to take down bad people on the dark web. For those who don't know, the dark web is the shady underbelly of the internet. It's where all the really fucked up illegal shit goes down. Drug markets, weapon sales, human trafficking, you name it. It's all hosted on these anonymous websites that are basically untraceable. Well, Sarah made it her personal mission to try and disrupt these sites. She'd hack in, get intel, dox the owners, turn info over to the police, all that good stuff. She took down dozens of dark web markets and illegal porn sites over the years. She flew under the radar for a long time. She was smart about covering her tracks and staying anonymous herself. But she got a little too ballsy. There was this one site that she just couldn't crack. It was ran by this mystery guy that went only by Warlock. From what Sarah found out, he was like the Pablo Escobar of the dark web. Dude controlled a massive network of illegal sites dealing in every horrible thing you could imagine. So Sarah got it in her head that she had to take Warlock down. She started spending night after night trying to hack his systems and sites. And I kept telling her, Sarah, this is dangerous. This dude seems legit untraceable. Maybe we're in over our heads. But you know how she was. Stubborn as hell. She wouldn't let it go. She got closer and closer to breaching his network, too. She was sending me screenshots of her progress. She was like, I almost got him. Then one day, she went silent for like a week straight. That was super weird because we texted every day, pretty much. I called, texted, Michael, her boyfriend at the time even went to her apartment, but she was just gone. I figured maybe she got caught up with work or family stuff. Sarah, 
did have a habit of going off the grid for a few days every now and then. So at first, I didn't think much of it. But after two weeks went by with no word, I knew something was really wrong. I went to the cops and filed a missing persons report. But you know how they are. They didn't take it seriously at first because she was an adult and there were no signs of a crime. By this point, Michael was freaking out too. None of her co-workers or family had heard from her either. That's when I knew I had to take matters into my own hands. See, Sarah and me went way back to high school. We were both computer nerds and got really into hacking and cybersecurity as a hobby. She was always the brains of the operation though. I just tagged along for fun. Anyways, Michael knew about my background in hacking. So him and some of Sarah's MIT friends basically recruited me to try and pull off some vigilante shit to find her. We were all desperate at this point. So I started digging around on my end, trying to trace any breadcrumbs Sarah may have left behind. I knew she had been going hard at trying to take down this warlock guy, so I focused my efforts there. After a couple of weeks, I finally managed to backdoor my way into the servers that hosted warlock sites. What I found, well, it still keeps me up at night. This sicko was running dozens of super fucked up trafficking rings and what seemed to be a massive snuff porn operation. The sites were filled with listings. That's right, listings. Hundreds, maybe thousands, of people for sale. Pictures, bios, prices, reviews, all listed out like they were items on fucking Amazon. Most of them looked to be focused on sex trafficking. A lot of young women and kids from Asia, Eastern Europe, places like that. But there were also plenty of guys. LGBT folks, even what looked like entire families. Shit made me legitimately ill. And the snuff sites. God, I don't even want to go into the details. It was worse than anything you could imagine. Everything from plain old rape and torture to full-on massacres and genocide kind of stuff. All being sold on the dark web to the highest bidders, apparently. So at this point, I was like 90% sure Warlock had nabbed Sarah after she got too close to exposing his whole operation. Maybe she pissed him off or threatened his cash flow one too many times. Even with backdoor access to his sites, I had no clue where Warlock was actually based out of or where he could be holding people hostage. The sites were hosted through a crazy decentralized and encrypted network. It seemed like a dead end until one day about three months after Sarah went missing, I stumbled upon this subfolder on one of the sites called Silly Bitches. I still have no idea what that even means. The section looked newer than the rest of the sites too. When I clicked it, my stomach turned. It was listing after listing of women, but they all seemed... off. There was just something odd about the pictures and the way the bios were written that stood out. After cross-checking the listings against social media profiles and records, I realized all the women listed in that section were American and most of them seemed to come from upper-middle-class backgrounds. A lot were even college students. That's when it hit me. These were Americans who had recently gone missing. This sicko was selling kidnapped girls from the States on this premium subcategory of his site or something. And one of those listings was for Sarah. She looked straight up terrified in the picture. They had her posing in a bikini, like a magazine photo shoot or some shit. But you could see the fear in her eyes. Her bio listed all her accomplishments, her physical stats, piercings, and stuff like that. And then at the very bottom, buy now for $350,000. I damn near threw up everywhere. My best friend since middle school was being sold to wealthy sickos, like a piece of meat on the dark web. In that moment though, I knew I was onto something. This was the first lead I'd had in months. 
I showed the guys what I'd found, and we were finally able to get the police to take us seriously. The evidence was damning enough that they escalated things to the FBI, who I guess had been quietly trying to track Warlock down for years at this point. We turned everything over. Backdoor access, site intel, Bitcoin wallet info, everything. And sure enough, they were able to use it to unravel the whole thing. Turns out, Warlock was actually a group of highly skilled hackers and network engineers from Russia. Using the info I dug up, the feds could trace the group's Bitcoin transactions to a hidden compound in Siberia. Within a couple of weeks, they had the whole place raided and over 100 victims rescued, including Sarah. She was understandably super traumatized from the whole thing. Wouldn't say much about what all happened while she was held hostage. Just that she was so relieved to be alive after thinking she was never going to make it out of there. As for the Warlock guys, they were extradited to the US and are currently facing life sentences for human trafficking, money laundering, sexual exploitation of minors, and about a million other charges. That's pretty much the whole story. Just a reminder that the dark web isn't some funny hacker movie shit. There are real psychopaths out there doing unspeakable things, and they're smarter and sicker than you could ever imagine. This is The Curator. I hope you've enjoyed today's scary stories. Until next time.